Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming, and uh, I want to welcome all of you today to today's commission hearing on uh, human rights and the rule of law in Cambodia. Any other members may be showing up, but this is a kind of a crazy day, so people will come and go, and that's just the way things work around here, I guess. Uh, but I want to thank the commission, uh, for the, the commission staff in particular, for their work in organizing today's hearing. And I would especially like to welcome our distinguished panel today, in particular our Cambodian visitors. We also owe a lot of gratitude to the uh, distinguished commission member, uh, our, my colleague from Virginia, uh, Congressman Jim Moran and his staff for, um, for initiating today's hearing. And this hearing came about because Mr. Moran um, asked us to do a hearing on this. So we're grateful for his interest and in his commitment to human rights. I would like to state for the record that after the hearing, I will send a letter to our ambassador in Cambodia, Carol, uh, Carol Rodley, uh, to bring her attention uh, to, the, uh, to the important work that our Cambodian witnesses are doing and the issues that we need to follow up in our bilateral conversations with our partners in Cambodia. I know that Ambassador Rodley is, close, is, is in close contact with the entire cross-section of NGOs in Cambodia and that uh, she's a strong advocate for civil society and, and human rights. I'm looking forward to our continued collaboration uh, with all of you who are here today when you return to Cambodia. And I know that our embassy will keep in contact with you as well as see how your work is progressing. I would also like to state for the record that the Cambodian embassy has released a statement regarding uh, some of the issues that will be uh, the subject of today's commission hearing, which is available uh, at the press table. And this statement will also be made part of the record. So you can pick it up there and it will be part of the permanent record. While Cambodia is an important strategic partner in the region, it has gotten comparatively little attention by the U.S. Congress. And the human rights situation has rarely been the subject matter of this commission or of its precursor, the Congressional Human Rights Caucus. On those occasions, Congressional Human Rights deliberations largely focused on the aftermath of the killing fields of the Pol Pot terror regime and the long overdue, rather tedious way in which the hybrid UN-Cambodian Khmer Rouge Tribunal, ECC, Sikula, the member of, the member of parliament of the Sam uh, Ranzi party, we're honored to have you here. Uh, Pan Kek, the founder of Lakato. We have Moun Tola, the head of the labor program, Community Legal Center. At least uh, Sophie Richardson, who's the Asia Advocacy Director for Human Rights Watch. And we are honored to have all of you here. We look forward to your testimony. We'll begin with you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman McGovern. I wish to express my most sincere gratitude to the co-chairs of the imminent Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission for holding this important hearing this morning. I wish to express my gratitude to Congressman James Moran for initiating this hearing. Distinguished members of the U.S. Congress, here in this room, I am testifying as an elected representative of the people, as a woman exercising her full right of speech and expression. But in Cambodia, this is not possible. In fact, as a member of parliament from the San Ramsey Party, the lead opposition party, I was stripped of my parliamentary immunity and given a criminal conviction for openly criticizing Prime Minister Hun Sen. I was denied any legal representation because my lawyer was intimidated, threatened with his bombing, and pressured into withdrawing from my case. Unfortunately, my situation is not unique. I am one of the thousands of innocent Cambodians who are tried by a judicial system that is well known for corruption and for acting under the control of the government and those who have political influence. Distinguished members of the U.S. Congress, parliamentary immunity should provide members of parliament with special status, protection, and safety in order to give us the ability to serve the people without fear of retribution. However, the unconstitutional lifting of my immunity and the immunity of my colleagues threatens democracy at its core. We cannot fulfill our functions when in constant fear. 
of prosecution. Today, the nine commissions in Parliament are entirely controlled by the ruling party. All recommendations are rejected without any debate. Contrary to the principles of the Paris Peace Accord in 1991, Cambodia is practically a one-party state at this present time. Distinguished members of the U.S. Congress, as witness, witnesses to this important hearing, we bring you the high hope of our people to be ruled by law and not by the power of corrupt officials. When the livelihoods of our people are affected and our natural resources are illegally mismanaged, we have the right and the duty to intervene. We have a role to play in building democracy and the development that benefits all. Numerous reports from the Office of the UN Human Rights Commission, the Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, Cambodian NGOs, the World Bank, and the EU have pointed to the alarming situation on violations of human rights and corruption in Cambodia. All of these reports have been dismissed by the Cambodian government. We believe that such denial and the continued grave violations on the rights of our people deserve immediate action to restore the vision of the Paris Peace Accord. We need to crack the facade of democracy in Cambodia. For this reason, on behalf of the minority in Cambodia, we call on the U.S. Congress to send a high-level delegation to Cambodia to help negotiate dialogues between the President and the National Assembly and the minority leader and their representatives in order to discuss rules that will bring democratic practices to the functioning of the Cambodian Parliament. We, we, we stop the practice of lifting parliamentary immunity as a form of political persecution. We respectfully urge you to intervene in the following cases. The release from prison and the dropping of charges against journalists, <coughs> officials of the Sam Ramsey Party, villagers, and trade unions, and the restoration of parliamentary immunity of opposition members of parliament. <coughs> we call on the U.S. government to, one, increase its funding for the National Democratic Institute and the International Republican Institute to immediately work with the UNDP in democratizing the electoral process for the upcoming local elections in 2012 and national elections in 2013. Two, to request an increase of budget for Voice of America and Radio Free Asia to expand its programming to include televised programs that will bring balanced information to the people of Cambodia. Three, to impose visa sanctions on high-ranking officials in the Cambodian government and their immediate family members suspected of corruption and to investigate investments and bank accounts in the U.S. These investigations should be made public. Four, to tie U.S. assistance to the Cambodian army to, freeze, to the freeze on the granting of further mineral or petroleum concessions until the government has established a basic legal, environmental, and social framework to adequately govern the oil, gas, leading, gas and mining sectors. Distinguished members of the U.S. Congress, people the world over have heard America's message about the importance of democracy, the need for free and fair elections, and the respect for freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and the rule of law. Like President Obama and the rest of the world, and the rest of the American people, we in Cambodia share the same vision and recognize the need for responsible leadership and a true commitment to global protection of human rights. We commend Secretary of State Hillary Clinton for her remarkable commitment to make governments and the UN responsible for and invest in protection, promotion, and respect for women's rights as human rights. We support US policy, foreign policy, that puts human rights first. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, for your, thank you for your very thoughtful and very powerful statement. We appreciate it. Woman Carrie. 